So I'm going to switch the way that I shoot these videos because I because I'm right-handed. I think I was obscuring what I was doing in some of them. So I'm going to switch it so it's focused more on this side, which hopefully it'll make it a little bit better. Um, this I've also switched my cutting board to my messy side. Um, it had gotten bad enough that I just started doing some inking, and so. It's very handy because I flip it for when I'm cutting and then flip it back for when I'm being messy like today. So we are going to colorize some of this Tyvek for both sides of the project. Um, and I had already picked out some colors when I picked out my swatches, so I know what I'm going for. Um, and I'm just keeping these here handy. I won't get the exact uh, same color, but I need to kind of, I'm using it as a, a guide. And what I'm going to do is take a piece of scrap Tyvek here and just do a couple of experiments just to make sure I'm getting what I want. Um, I like the Doc Martin Bombay inks. They're a little bit hard to find. Um, and with the Tyvek, a little goes a long way. You don't need a lot of ink. So I'm just going to put it into this messy little palette. And I'm just going to do just a drop of each ink that I'm going to use. The black magic, you need a tiny, tiny bit. The Tyvek loves the black magic. So what I'll do is I'll leave the well beside it. Um, I'll just make it water and uh, this doesn't want to come out. Um, well, I might just, even, even just that little bit with water added is probably all I'm gonna need. I do have another one, so if that's coming out. These are new. Bombay ink, some of them, and I, I found that they tend to get a lot of sediment at the bottom, so I, I shake it up before I use them. And this up drop is really sticky, I think it's got sediment built up in it. So that's the Van Dyke Brown. In the background, you can see that I made this color chart, and I do this with most of my materials. It's a bit of a pain and time consuming when you do it, but then it's so handy because I can just look at it. I know what I'm going for. I know like with the brown, I want probably the sepia with some undertones of the Van Dyke brown, and I know where at least I'm starting. Sometimes when I do my samples, it'll be a surprise, but I know what I'm going for. That's the sepia. And then I'm going to use a little bit of this teal on the rocks for the spirit or the star maiden picture. Then I'm going to actually add, like I said, I'm going to pour some water. Uh, I'm going to use a smaller one here directly in to the well with the black magic because I know I need such a little teeny bit of the actual ink for my purposes. I'm just using it more to dull the blue. And then I'm gonna put some more water just in this center well. So the Tyvek loves the ink. You don't need a lot to spread around. And I found that it works best with layers and it works best if you put the ink off on, sorry, and then you rub it off right away. Your hands are going to get messy. You're going to have to wash them afterwards, but that's just part of it. So just with the black magic, I just want to see. No, it's pretty wussy. That's not, it's not even showing up hardly at all. If you were to put a drop of black magic on here, it's just amazing how it soaks in. Maybe I'll put some in just so you can see. So this is a new black magic different one that hopefully won't be having the same eyedropper issues. Let's put a little bit more in here. And just for demonstration sake, let me show you when you put the straight black magic on, it just goes black and deep right away. There's other black inks, but black magic um, is waterproof. And so once I, I've done it, like you can't hardly budge that at all. So I definitely don't want anything that dark in what I'm doing. And let's check this now that I've added some more black to my water there. That's more the tones that I'm going for. Or shade, I guess. 
I'm going to have kind of that shade behind where the blue is going on the Spirit in the Bottle background. And then I'm also trying to match kind of a color like that for the stones. I think, I think I'm going to need even a little bit more. So because you always have lots of sample papers left around, don't throw them out because they're handy to do little color studies. And if you're doing a big project too, you definitely want to keep notes. So that was a little bit too watered, that ink, so I'm just adding a little bit more of the black magic to it. But yeah, if you're doing a big project, it's a good idea to label your color charts because you think you'll remember and you won't. And most of these won't be as hard, but I'm trying to get a real specific tone with this gray. And it's still, now I've probably gone a little bit more the other way. Let's see. Yeah. And I can combat that by wetting my brush first and just putting a dab. That's probably about right. And since I ended up using more of this than I thought, for just the color samples, I'm going to go grab another swatch of the tie -like. So I'll just make a note because I tend to forget, but I will, to get the black that I want, I'm going to wet brush first. It's always better to go too light because especially with that black, you're not getting it back off the tie -like. Um, So with the other colors too, I'm going to do, actually, I'm rethinking as I do it. Um, I want to see what the blue looks like on top of the, um, of the gray. So I'm going to just do a little wash of that darker blue. And it's probably not going to show up very well in the video, but it's actually getting similar tones for what I'm looking for there. I know that with the Tyvek, I'm going to have some white that doesn't come go away, and so I will probably add some pastel afterwards. But this lets me see a little bit darker areas. So I'm happy with that, that's what I'm going for. And you, if you can see it's beading up there, I'll just take the paper towel and wipe off some of the beading. If it's, I'd rather go too light and always add another layer than to go too dark. So that will be my blue tones for the background with the spirit in the bottle. And then I wanna look at some of that forest floor color and I'm doing the Van Dyke and the sepia. So I'm gonna put the Van Dyke underneath because I want it to be just red undertones and the dominant color to be more the sepia. So I think I can go a little darker than that, more concentrated. And once you've got some wet material on the Tyvek, you can always add a little bit more of the ink. And again, I'm going to wipe it off. Ooh, that wiped off a lot. And you notice it'll spread when I wipe it too. It's not a real exact way of adding it. So that was more washy than I think I thought it would be. So I'm going to add just a lot more direct. The Van Dyke and the sepia, you tend to get a lot of particulates, I guess, in it. I don't know if that's just the nature of the browns. And I wouldn't worry too much about it. One, it'll add some visual interest. And also, it'll come off when I wipe it. And the wiping spreads it a little bit. So I don't know, because that's a new one, maybe it's not fully mixed, but I can see that I really don't even need to dilute the Van Dyke, or yeah, the Van Dyke at all. It's, I'm gonna have to go make successive layers to get the depth of color I want anyways out of that. So I'm going to put a note, because I forget, don't dilute the Van Dyke and that that's the blue and while this is drying just a little bit I will try a little bit of the aqua over the black magic also because I'm wanting that for the rocks I want some of the aqua undertones to be coming through we're going to do something else with that okay so that's way too strong some colors just like paint and stuff are much more vibrant and that blue is really vibrant. I don't want it that vibrant at all. I want the dominant color for the rocks to be the gray. So I'm going to add another little patch of gray here. So 
I forgot my own note. See, I forgot already. I was supposed to wet the brush first. And you'll notice with it, for some reason, the way the black magic is formulated, it does not hardly wipe off the Tyvek. It goes right in and stays. But you can see why you want to play with some of these things not on your actual piece first. And I'm going to let that dry. It doesn't take long to dry. Um, especially because I'm not really worried about lifting up the color. It doesn't have to be actually dry. It just needs to be in the, the material a little bit. So I'm going to try doing the overlay of the sepia now. I'm going to try a little bit washier. But I suspect it's going to be like the Van Dyke Brown where I can go fairly concentrated to get the color I'm looking for. And what I'll do is even, this at least tells me kind of the tones that I'm looking at. And I know I want it to be fairly dark in this picture, and so I'll probably do a lot of successive layers. And it probably doesn't show in the video, but I'm getting a lot of interplay between the, the darker brown and the redder tones of the um, the Van Dyke and between the sepia and the Van Dyke. Okay, so now that we've let that set a little bit, let's try really diluting the turqu the aqua. Teal, sorry, it's teal. Because I want it to just kind of almost give a sheen of like the water effect on top of the gray, which is what I'm getting here. I'm liking this. And I might I think I might actually let it dry on its own rather than wipe it off because I like how I'm getting pooling colors in different places and I think that'll be really effective with the rocks. Okay, so I'm going to make a note because remember I forget that don't wipe. And I'm going to say this is teal, this is the floor and that this blue is the forest. Okay. And I noticed that the Tyvek bleeds through, so I'm gonna wipe up that little bit on my map so it doesn't go through my other pace at place. And I'm also going to bring my um, drawing closer so that I can kind of hold it up against the paper to remind me about proportions of how I want the the background to be what part's blue and what part's brown. This one is, I've overshooted it. I'm not being real picky about it. It doesn't matter. It's not real specific, but I want a ballpark. So I think I will do a big wash brush because I'm going to do a big area. I think I'll actually wet it down. Um, I go I want more than halfway to be the floor, so that's kind of the, a little over the upper third. And I'm going to wet it, and I'm going to add some of my... Ooh, look at how lovely that is. And this is fun. It's fun sometimes to just play with the uh, what the ink does on the paper. Sometimes I don't think we have enough play time. And I'm not worried too much about, I'm getting some splatters, but I want the floor to look really organic anyways, so it's not, it doesn't bother me. I'm going to go back and, and get some of this coming up. And again, if you were trying to be real exact, this is probably not the technique to use. But since I'm not, and I want a bit of a blur between what's happening anyways, I'm going to, like I said, the Tyvek bleeds through. So I'll go through and just wipe this off so that when I put it to the side to dry, it's not making a mess of everything. Lots of paper towels, lots of messy hands. And this is the piece that I'm going to use for the pebbles on the bottom of the Star Maiden. And it's we're going to do something else to it afterwards, and I really don't know what's going to happen. So we're just going to make a big area of basically the color that I want right now. So I'm going to add some of the water. My brush still has a lot of ink. So I'm going to um, 
It'll be pretty washy, but I'll come back and add a little bit more ink after. This is a definitely different kind of messy approach than what I'm always doing. And it because you wipe it off and because it adheres to the fibers in the Tyvek in a kind of random way, um, it doesn't really matter about your brush strokes or how you're putting it down. And again, paper towels, we're going to wipe off the excess. And I can tell this is probably lighter than I want. And I want that aqua blue to be on the top layer because I want to see it sit there. So I'm going to do another layer of this black wash after I let this layer dry. Sorry, I'll try and talk more clearly. This doesn't feel like a natural process to me. Okay, so I'll put that over there to dry. And then <clears throat> we'll do a wash of some of the brown tones. And I probably could be getting up and washing my brush better, but because these are all kind of related colors, it doesn't bother me if some of those gray tones come through. So I'm not worried too much about washing it off in this case. So this, check my notes, said don't dilute the Van Dyke Brown. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna come in and do a wash of it here. And I may need to get more ink because this brush is just soaking it up. I've been working on a big, big mural installation, which is what I started using the Tyvek on, and I've been doing huge, huge sheets that use a ton of ink, so I'm not really judging the best of how much ink I should be using at this point. I'm going to wipe this off, but I suspect I'm going to want to do a second layer of it because I don't think it's going to come very dark. I can tell, yeah, I want to do, definitely want another layer of that. Somehow I picked up a big chunk of black there, but that'll just be one of those surprises that come out of doing this process. And I might do a light layer, I think I might actually do a light layer of that gray coming through because I think it's giving some darker undertones here. Ooh, that's dark. I'm gonna move that fast because I don't want it to sit that dark. I'm wiping it off quick because that was darker than I whoops, wanted for sure. Not too worried about how this is drying because we'll be able to smooth it out. And part of what I like about this process is that I could, on the forest floor, I could cut out all these little bits of paper and I might, you know, cut some of the edges when I trim this and take the colors to give it some depth. But, but it has this lovely natural texture that comes through when you do the Tyvek that I'm enjoying finding, enjoying finding places to use that. So I'll put that piece aside to dry. Let's do a second layer of the gray on this piece that's going to be for our river rocks. So again, you want to kind of have a plan of what you're working on in mind. I like to um, combine pieces when I'm doing something like this. If I'm going to switch it all over and have my inks out and have brushes out and be getting messy and wearing messy clothes, I'd rather do, you know, multiple projects at once during all that. Okay, and let's wipe it off again and this... Probably it for this paper towel. It's getting pretty dirty. And I don't want to be bringing extra colors in. I'm going to start wiping it off. So that's the... I'm happy with that tone for my River Rocks. It's similar in value to what I had pulled out before. And then we're going to just add some aqua on it after. Um, on this one, we'll be, <clears throat> excuse me, 
excuse me, we're going to do two things. We're going to clean off my brush first because it has a lot of the black in it, but that's okay because we are actually going to do that blue. Let's add some water. Let's get some of those blue tones going up there. So I don't want it to look linear, so I am going to do a little bit of blotting, but I'm going to blot it rather than wipe it because I want some areas for the blue to stay up more. And as I'm looking at this, I'm making some judgments, and one judgment I'm making right now is I want a little bit darker tones in the background. So I'm going to bring out a little bit more of the black and the blue back there. And the water, it's just bottled water that I use in a little spray bottle. You'll see that when we do the embossing one. And my brush has picked up colors from other places, but in this case, it's not a bad thing. It'll also help these two pieces kind of look like maybe they belong together. And there are colors and tones that I want in there. I probably should have better processes, but especially with this technique, I like getting some of that inner play of colors coming through. I think I'm learning I should start by having paper towels and beads. And I'm sure it doesn't show in the video, but I really, really like this blue and black background I'm getting up there. And now I'm just going to add some more of the brown tones under there. One drawback with any kind of piece of art is I don't think it ever reproduces as well as it looks in person. I'm going to clean this brush off a bit. So now I'm just going to use that last color that's kind of these undertones here, which is the sepia. Sometimes when I've got a lot of water here and I just still need, feel like I need a little more tone, I will actually drop right on the paper. And spread it out. Just that, <clears throat> let that sit and absorb for a minute.
think I will probably do some just direct application of that sepia because I feel like it's just not getting as rich as what I want. Um, so I'll let it, this piece dry for a minute. It's actually can't, kind of handy to be working on two things at once because I can work on the one while the other one dries. And it's, it's really lovely, the interplay I'm getting here. Um, I think I just want a little bit more of the turquoise coming through, or the teal, that's what it is, teal. So I'm going to wet it again. I've got some brown undertones from the brush, but that's okay. I'm going to take that teal, which remember is really, really strong. I'm just going to kind of hit it in a few places and pull it through. Well, that's, that's a technique I'd have to play with because it is so strong, just that little tiny bit in the brush is... Hopefully I didn't do one of those things where it looked better before and now I've ruined it. definitely think that's where I'm ready to just leave it. Oops, put it up there. And this, I'll try and get a teal out of the brush. That's just water, and I'm gonna put the Van Dyke or sepia right directly on it. And I also know that I can come in and, and add some more spot colors with other inking and pastel effects. And so I want the base there, but if it's not quite as dark as I want, I'll come back in and manipulate it. I don't think I'm going to do much more with this kind of technique right now. I'm just going to let it dry. We'll just let both of those dry. 